Bonjour now, YouTube. Trevor here, Summit or Nothing. Tom here, off the beaten pot. Back again for another hike, wild camp, and general grub up. 60 mile an hour winds. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> yep, Tom's back out again, gonna do some more cooking oh, yeah. on the tranges. So it's a Friday night, so we're doing the wild camp first and then the hike tomorrow. Lovely area, we're in the South Brent area. We parked up at Shipley Bridge and we're gonna be looking for the Broad Falls tomorrow. Today I've got the Fox 2, the OEX Fox 2 tent to give a try. Well, I'm giving a second chance to my MSR Elixir 1. Well, we're walking up alongside the river here and it's oh, amazing rocks and the water's just sort of cascading down it. Really interesting. So we are at that point on the map now. Yeah. That's the bridge we don't want to take. We're going to keep to the left or oh, sorry, to the west, because someone will pick me up on that, of the river, down that enchanted alleyway, and find somewhere to pitch up for the night. Well, I got through that surprisingly easy with this big tent sticking out either side. Don't go in that. <laughs> Woo! That was cold. Where are you leading us, mate? You sure this is a route? <laughs> A solid, solid, solid rocks, solid rocks. Over. That's gonna. There's a tiny rock next to the one you're on. Oh, yeah. That's it. Knock it up there. Oh, jelly. Isn't it? You're going in there. Yeah. Right, we're out of the uh, bog of eternal stench now. <laughs> now we've got this lovely uh, climb, it's like a wall ahead of us. Interesting route, Tom. Yeah, but you love it, hey, come and have a minute. <laughs> Hefty weather, bogs, vertical inclines. And last time you said it was your fault the weather was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's been quite a climb for first thing on a Friday evening, isn't it? <laughs> After our day's graft, but the views are opening up for me. But down this valley, that's impressive. Oh. What you can't see now, just behind that hill, there's the massive reservoir. Oh, is that the Avon? Yeah, Damn. yeah, it's quite impressive. You wouldn't expect it to be around the corner in somewhere like this. So it's like quarter past eight now, we've got a, still got to set up camp. It's a nine o'clock sunset, so we better start looking for somewhere to pitch. I bought the tarp again as a communal area. Loads of space in that, I thought I'd be beneficial. Have a little kitchen, kitchen diner. The barren waste of Dartmoor, rolling hills of Devon. It's cracking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah what do you recommend here? Or? I think so, we have a scalp. It's a nice flat area, sort of very long here, isn't it? The wind is not due to shift or veer this time. No. So if we can pick a sensible spot, we can have a good night's sleep. Yeah. Less entertaining for you lot, but... <laughs> right, so we're setting up tent. The OEX Fox 2. Fox with a PH. You feel like you're going to break it. Yeah, it's ripped, there. See, you've got a rip here. That was from getting that pole in. Just a bit too tight. There we are, I've just noticed I'm right on the rocks here. I probably should have come over a bit more. I might just shift it now. Let's have a look at Tom's elixir while he's here. Not too close, mate. <laughs> so it's a, what's it called, geodesic? No, it's not geodesic. No? Which is why it did what it did in those winds. Geodesic ones are designed to like, if it takes a lot of force on that way, Compression and tension work together. But what I've done today, which I haven't done before, is pinned both of these together. Usually I do the ground sheet, and then you've got to sort of hook these tabs under and it gets a bit annoying. See, yeah, if you don't put enough tension, that's just gonna drop right off, which makes the initial putting these poles in quite tricky. But the beauty of it is, yeah, you've got these gray clips going to the gray 
and the red goes onto the red. Ah, yeah, so you can't get confused, Tom. Well, you say that, but you might have noticed <laughs> me redoing this because I got confused with it. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> say no more. So there we go, the Fox 2 set up. Don't look so good from this side. Looks alright the other side. Let's have a look at this side. Here it is. Looks like a kite, doesn't it? We've got a kite and a sail. So yeah, we don't want wind tonight, do we? So I'm gonna throw all my crap in there and uh, yeah, should we put the tarp up here somewhere? Yeah. Set the tarp up there? Yeah. And get some food on. Right, this is the Didi Hammocks tarp. Look at how big it is when it's packed up in that little bag and how thin it is, but it's real tough. Well, ish. So there's the top, there's the fox. It looks quite wide from here, doesn't it? And then Tom's MSR. Base camp, this is base camp. So Tom, what are we cooking today? The cottage pie. So I guess it's a, a two-part. So there's like the main bit and the topping. And this is cottage pie. Cottage pie mix. I didn't tell you this over the phone. This is vegan cottage pie mix. So it's dehydrated oh. soya mints. You wouldn't want to take a big bag of mints out sweating next to your back. <laughs> so that's why I've went with that. Um, generally with this dehydrated stuff, you want to um, rehydrate it. And usually you you have to put quite a lot of water in, but this is partially dehydrated, so right. it will still last a while, but you can see it's still got a bit of squidge to it. So that will allow us to just use as little water as possible. In this mix, there's veggie mints. I've flavored it quite a lot with salt, pepper, cumin, oregano. We've got chorizo in here as well, and dehydrated veg, and smoked paprika as well. Lovely. In this one, I've got enough mashed potato mix for both of us. Like smash. Yeah. So we're gonna boil all the water we need. If we were having coffees as well, yeah. we'd add coffee water, mashed potato water, and that water. So I'm gonna put a bit, probably that much in for the mash. Yeah. And that much in for the filling. Yeah, we'll leave off the um, simmering. Right, and then there's my lid. Over like that, yeah. Yeah. So we've got that boiling now. Mine, mine just came up to a rolling boil. So I'm gonna just put a tiny bit in, in my pan now. Keep my pot to one side and then add half of this match mash mix. It doesn't even have to be on the flame when you do it, it's just somewhere to put it. So, fried cheese in this, we've got cheesy toppings. Oh, nice. Oh, I can smell the cheese in that. Now, put that to one side. Right, next. Next, relight my fire. He's on. And then you should have just a little bit of water and then just empty your bag in. So now you want to stir in the water, make sure you see that all of it gets wet. Oh, there's loads of nice smells coming out from there, Tom. Yeah, and as well, you might, again, to up your protein intake or your calorie intake, you can always add a bit of olive oil, which I'm going to do, just because, as you've noticed on my channel, I add it to everything. Go on, stick a touch in there. Yep, it's all just sizzling away there, Tom. So once we've got this stirred and the heat right through it, We'll put the simmerings back on, add the potato topping, add the lid, and yep. just and then that's just it. Bake it. That's it, yeah. But what I'm gonna do to add to mine as well is add a bit of Worcester sauce. Yep, I'm all over that, mate. But I'm also gonna add, because I'm a bit of a fan of it, jalapeno Tabasco sauce. Yes, go on. Try a bit. Because last time we forgot to do that completely, didn't we? Yeah. So mine's steaming away nicely now. I'm going to put on my simmering just over half. Pat it down flat. Put it on, flatten it down. That's what Tom told me to do. That's what I'm doing. So yeah, put your lid as in your potato lid. And you're just going to spoon it on and spread it out as best you can. Okay. It's almost got a lid on it. <laughs> a potato lid. So there we go, that's got my potato on top. So uh, it's doing its job. So we're done here, aren't we Tom? 
I believe so. It's, it's all been simmering, cooking nicely, melding together. We've kept the lids on just um, to make sure that potato gets nice and hot. But before you tuck in... Oh, I need to... oh what's this? Dried onion. Oh! What a touch. And then we're about ready to eat. Mmm, Tom, that is absolutely handsome. Yeah. Got a bit of a kick with that jalapeno as well. I didn't realise how hungry I was until then. Alright, so I'm in the Fox 2 now. There's a lot of mesh in here, so it's not the warmest skin, but it's, uh, it's quite a mild night tonight, so it's, it's fine for that. How are you getting on with your tent, Trev? Yeah, it's alright, mate. It's, um, it's a lot roomier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, you were saying that you were worried about being pinched in a bit. Yeah, when I was just sort of sat in the doorway, it did seem really small, but now I'm in here, it's not a bad size. Yeah. There's enough room for both me and all my gear. Yeah, it looks like it's quite, it's got a low profile. Yeah, it should hold up better in stronger winds, I reckon. Yeah, well, hopefully not tonight. No, not tonight. It's quite mild, isn't it? It's not a bad e evening, is it? Oh, it's, it's lovely. It's actually lovely. I thought we might be in for a rainy one when we set off earlier. It's just been a light drizzle, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty perfect now. Yeah. How's your tent over there, all right? Yeah, it's doing well. It's a, it's a nice space. Uh, once you've got everything in and your bed's ready, it's pretty homely. All your gear goes out in the vestibule, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which is good for the dry days, but it's a nice vestibule. My mother's always told me. <laughs> what's your what's your vestibule? My mum always said. <laughs> no, it's the morning. Must have admit I slept like a log last night. But it was freezing, it was absolutely freezing. Still tired now. Morning. Morning Tom, you alright mate? Yeah, you? Yeah, I'm alright. Cold. Tom's getting breakfast on. Oh yeah. Croissants. That's it. Was Ham it? and cheese croissants. Ham and cheese croissants. Sounds handsome. I prepped them yesterday just in case we didn't want to do something fancy. This is quick and easy and tasty. Oil in the pan, shop bought croissant, and then port salut or any nice cheese, nice ham from the deli counter. Wedge it in here, soak in the oil a bit. Slowly let it do its thing. Heat, and then you turn it, heat, and then you get a crispy croissant with melted cheese and ham. Nice. So today's plan, we're somewhere here between Black Tor and Hunter's Stone. If we head north, right up over this ridge here, Board Falls is what we're looking for today. A spectacular waterfall. Crisping up now. Oh yes. It's a shame if you burn it. Still, still nice, but nice if you just get it crisped. So I'm tucking him into my uh, croissant. It's nice, nice and crispy. Nice and warm, nice and cheesy. We've got some water on the boil out here for our coffee chocolates of the morning. It's slowly coming up to heat. It's a nice morning actually. No, it stopped drizzling. See you love your coffee chocolate, mate. Oh yes, thank you very much. I'm just doing another quick tip Tuesday. There's a link to Tom's channel here. Go and have a look. Everyone who goes outdoors should have a look at quick tip Tuesdays for a quick tip on a Tuesday. You don't have to do them on Tuesdays, do you, if you're out on the trail? Oh, they does. don't work if you do it on a Wednesday. They don't, no. so you do have to actually do them on a Tuesday. Yeah. I did wonder that. Camp's gone. 
How about that? My bag is absolutely bursting at the seams again. Look at it. Rolls of fat, you see all that? So, uh, yeah, it's time for us now to set off on a journey of exploration of the South Moor of Dartmoor. So we're walking on Dartmoor in the South Moor, in the South Brent area. We've camped over on that tour over there, which was Hunter's Stone or Black Tour. So we're reaching this sort of a compound area here now, Pound, which on the map looks like a cock and balls. So uh, easily recognisable. You've got a bad medical condition if that's easily recognisable <laughs> as a cock and balls. <laughs> so this is uncharted territory for me. I don't recognise any of this. It's alien to me. I'm looking at these tours and that, that are around and I don't know quite what they are. Whereabouts I am on the moor in relation to where I've been. The closest I've been this way was sort of up a beacon when we camped at Hangar Shell Rock, I think here, which was the southernmost point of Dartmoor and we're just sort of up on the north east side of that. It's not an old terrain isn't it Tom? Yeah, yeah it is. It's getting worse as we get closer to the top. Yeah, there's nowhere to, to rest. <sighs> These fools better be worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's hard work. Just check the maps, we're about 300 metres from the top. A two days hike? Yeah, place. in this. Uh, once we're up there, we can have a look. See where we're going from there. Hopefully the views will open up. From the, uh, the phallic pen, called the Rider's Rings, we've, uh, we didn't follow the track because if it was ever used, it's long gone now. So we've lopped our way through there. And on the top of the peak here, which is where we are now, there's nothing on the map that really says massive nipple, which um, you'd assume it would be really useful taking a bearing from or navigationally. We'll draw our own on, draw a nipple on. We'll draw a nipple on. Let's get up there. Oh, that's quite a can. Hard enough for us, but we didn't even have to bring these rocks up here. No, no views come into sight yet, Tom. No. <laughs> More of the same by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a very, very barren landscape across here. The South Moor, it's a lot harder going than the North. Don't know, maybe you disagree, but it seems a lot more, a lot less to see. It's interesting though, isn't it? Well, I think I see something I recognise here, right in the distance over there. You can see the mast. So I think that is North Hessery Tor. So the mound in behind it, I'd say is Great Mist Tour. We are camped with Stan last week. So starting to tie up areas from this north and the south. So we're walking now down towards this valley here. That's where Broad Falls is up there somewhere. This is Huntington Hill, and you can see the settlement. Like Tom was saying, you can imagine people had set up home there. Could you imagine spending all your life living on an angle? Like that, he said. Oh, back in this old tussocky terrain. Oop. Yeah, not been the best train today. Just take it one step at a time. Careful not to break your ankle. Well, Tom's just uh, done my other leg to even out this. A little bit of a brook coming through there. I managed to get over, and I think Tom trod on one patch that I trod on and missed the other. Yeah. <laughs> We're nearing the river now, look. Good place to stop, get some water. Maybe have another brew. Maybe have another brew, tend to my uh, French foot. Yeah. <laughs>
is enough to start. So I've got my filter on here. Just literally connect it to that. So this is the Sawyer Mini, if you haven't already seen my water filter system. I don't often use it, I, I am alright with carrying water if I'm just going out on a day hike, but we run out of all water so we've needed it. It's uh, quite straightforward, you get a little bag to fill up and then you get bags, extra bottles I've bought to put water into. But you just squeeze, that's why it's called the Sawyer Mini Squeeze. And you can see it's a bit of a slow flow rate. I'm so thirsty. I haven't got the patience to wait to then pour into a bottle. Good thing about the Sawyer systems is you can just drink straight from it. Like that? Like that. Cheers. Now these filters are good for, I think something ridiculous, like 200,000 litres. I'm not exaggerating, I don't think. Sounds like I am. I'll put the, I'll flash the exact figures up. But at the rate I use it, should last me about 200 years before it needs cleaning. Tom did mention though that if these ever freeze, if you've got water in them and you're out in cold conditions and they freeze over, don't use them because they crack the filters. So that's worth noting. One bottle full. I can fill up another one now. So there's me filtered bottle of water. And it's quite really clean. Let's have a swig. Nice. Dartmoor's finest. Right, so we're back on the move. Had a refreshment, filled up a water, and now we're heading towards Broad Falls along the riverbank. Hopefully the terrain isn't going to be too unforgiving down here. Me, but could you give me a hand? <laughs> no, I can't. It's like um, nature documentaries, you're not allowed to interfere, interfere with the environment. I can't do it really nice. Four times! <laughs> I'm stepping on his footsteps. He couldn't have been. He's a ghost. Mine was firm where I stood, it was proper firm. He went. Fuck. Come out here, let's try it. Is it though? Is it? <laughs> it's your route. <laughs> oh. I think that's the rocks of Broad Falls there. Eh? Yeah, just, ahead. just coming into view. I do nearly there then. Let's get and have a look at them. So we're at the top of the Broad Falls and just have a breather before we think about what we're doing next. Why would you come here? If it was worth coming here, there'd be a car park. <laughs> it was a, a long slog to get here and a bit of an anti-climax, but still we've done it, still beautiful. And it's also ticking off more squares of the Drasix Barb 365, Dartmoor 365. Again now, skirted around the Avon Dam down there, and uh, now we're back up onto a hillside with some rocks. It's like it's what we see on Dartmoor: hills and rocks, hills and rocks. <sighs> oh, oh no, it's a rock. It's Sorry. A rock. <laughs> so we are now coming into the, the final furlong of our journey. And we can see up here across the valley there, 
the point at which we camped. So there you go, this has been our walk. So anyway, Tom, thank you for choosing this route. I've enjoyed Very it. welcome. Yeah, a bit of a slug in parts, but... You got through the worst of it, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for feeding me. You're welcome. More trying to cooking, that was good. And uh, got to test out another tent. Yeah, we'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Ding the bell. Ding the bell. Share with your friends. Exactly. And check out Tom's channel, Off The Beaten Pot. I'll put a link up at the end here. Thank you very much. Anyway, thanks for watching. Arrivederci. Cheers and gone.